Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Father's Day. Oh, this is loud. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers amongst us. Um, hope you've had a good morning. Have you had some nice gifts, presents, cards? It's, it's still on its way. <laughs> I mean, I've had the best Father's Day gift ever. Yeah, I, 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 this is, honestly, this surprised me. But Daisy has brought me a tiny plot of land at Horgan Manor, which means I'm now Lord Lee Whitmore. I mean, come on, come on. <laughs> but the first thing I read was, you're not allowed to stay at the manor. So I was like, hugely disappointed. I had mixed emotions straight away. But <laughs> God is good. There's, of course, only one Lord, is there, there? And we're going to be celebrating and worshipping him this morning. We are going to celebrate the men in the church. We're going to celebrate the fathers amongst us as well this morning. And uh, we're going to praise and we're going to worship God. Are you ready to worship our Father? Our Father, God. Hallelujah. Let's stand. We're going to prepare our hearts to worship him this morning. Let's prepare our hearts to worship our Father, our Lord, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the God of Gods. And I'm aware that for, for many of us, Father's Day, it brings a lot of mixed emotions. But the one thing that never changes is our God is our Father, our loving Father, our caring Father, our kind Father, our good, good Father. And we're here to worship Him. We're here to praise Him. We're here to give Him glory this morning. And whatever week you've had, however you're feeling, encouragement to you this morning to worship for God. Psalms 103 says, Praise the Lord, O my soul. All my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. Who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. Who satisfies your desires with good things. So that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all impressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbour his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. We give you praise this morning. We give you glory. We say thank you, Jesus. Jesus, thank you, Lord, that you love us. We thank you, Lord, as far as the east is from the west, so is for us. your compassion for us, so is your goodness for us. And we just want to love you this morning. We worship you, Lord, Father God. Yes, we thank you for the fathers. We thank you for the men of the church, Lord, Father God. We do. We thank you with all our heart, but Lord, we put you first. We put you on the top of that list and we say you are our Father and we love you and we worship you and we praise you this morning and we give you all the glory that is due your wonderful and holy name. We praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. 
the gospel still makes the broken whole. I believe that the curse of sin was broken when they rolled away that stone. I believe, I believe, I believe. As I bow before you. Sing to the daughter, sing to the generations what the Lord has done. I wonder if one or two could just lead us this morning in thanks and praise and declare what the Lord has done. Hallelujah. Somebody lead us.
thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whispers of love in the dead of night, and you tell me that you're pleased and that I never alone. You're a good, good father. Sin upon him. 
but with this I know with all my heart, his wounds have paid my ransom. And as we're reminded of what you did for us, that your wounds paid for our ransom, it's why we can come before you now, Lord Jesus, and we can say, thank you, Father. We can say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We can say, you are a good, good father. Because we can have that parent and child relationship with you. Because your wounds paid our ransom. You made a way when there was no way. You became the way for truth and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through you. You made that way. And we thank you, Jesus. And Lord, our Father, maker of heaven and earth, we thank you today for all the fathers that are part of our lives. For the dads, the granddads, the stepdads, those who have stepped into the role and Lord, I want to thank you for every man of the church here this morning and who are not here this morning, who have loved us and nurtured us in the journey with you, Lord. We thank you for each one, whatever their role is, and we say thank you for all that you have done. Lord, we pray for those new dads, those who are learning the role, learning what it means to be a dad. I pray that they will be given all that is needed to fulfill that role. I pray that they will be guided by you, the great and perfect Father. Father God, would you be with those who find this day hard, those who have lost their fathers, those who miss their fathers. Lord, we pray that they will be comforted today, that the good memories that I will have with them will be a picture of comfort to them. I pray for those who find today difficult because their father is absent or maybe their father is not the father they should be. Lord, would you help those who are hurting? We pray that they will know the love that you provide, that they will know the comfort and peace, that they will know the strength and love from you today for good, good father. Lord, would you be with those fathers who desire to be a father but can't be for whatever reason? Lord, would you help them today with your strength and blessings? Father God, in a world where some dads let us down, you are faithful. As Psalms 27.10 says, Even if my father or mother abandons me, the Lord will hold me close. May that be close to our hearts for each and every one of us today. And Lord, once again, we thank you for those fathers who are doing the job, be it as a dad, stepdad, or a spiritual father. We thank you. We pray your blessing upon them today. We pray you will be everything and more in their lives today. We pray that they will know that you are the rock that they can rely on. We thank you for the every advice given, every time they have picked us up when we are hurt, for every time they have read the Bible to us, prayed with us, prayed for us, or just given us a hug. We thank you for every meal cooked, every DIY fixed, and every lift given. We thank you, Jesus. And Lord, we know it's hard being a father, as you are the ultimate father. You are the example that no father can ever reach. But we thank you, Lord God, that they try. And we thank you that not only do we have them in our lives, but we have you, the ultimate and perfect Father. And Lord, as we sing this next song, run to the Father. I pray, Lord, for every person experiencing hurt, every person experiencing joy, every person that sees this as a happy day or a sad day or a tough day, I pray, Lord, that each and every one of us will run to our Father this morning, we pray. In your precious name of Jesus, amen. Amen.
I've carried a burden for too long on my own. I wasn't created to bear it alone. I hear your invitation to let it all go. And I see it now, I'm laying it down And I know that I need you I run to the Father, I fall into grace I'm done with the hiding, no reason to wait My heart needs a surgeon, my soul needs a friend So I run to the Father again and again Again and again Oh, oh, oh You saw my condition Had a plan from the start Your son for redemption the price for my heart I don't have a context For that kind of love I don't understand I can't comprehend All I know is I need you I run to the Father I fall into grace I'm done with the hiding, no reason to wait My heart needs a surgeon, my soul needs a friend So I run to the Father again and again and again and again My soul needs a friend So I run to the Father again and again I run to the Father I fall into grace I'm done with the hiding No reason to wait My heart needs a surgeon My soul needs a friend So I run to the Father again and again I run to the Father, I fall into grace I'm done with the hiding, no reason to wait My heart found a surgeon, my soul found a friend So I run to the Father again and again and again and again
unto you, our Father. Again and again and again and again. And we thank you, Jesus. You receive us again and again and again. You hold us. You hug us. You pick us up. You help us. You do everything that we need because you're a good, good father. And we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Please do take your seats. So I was going to play video news, but we are running out of time because it is a family service, so I'm not going to play video news. I, I know, I can, I can feel your disappointment from here. I really can. I will put it on the, the WhatsApp or it'll be on the website tomorrow. Just to say, though... Um, don't forget, there's prayer meeting on Tuesday at 6.30 via Zoom. Worship workshop in the building from 7 o'clock. Um, if you're interested at all in worship, go and speak to Brian. He would love a chat with you. Um, also, next Sunday, we have Vision Sunday and the AGM. So that's very quickly. That's going to go from 11 till 12, Vision Sunday. All being well, it will be online. And then from... We'll have a quick cup of tea and then the AGM. Can I encourage you to be here? Can I encourage you to make sure you're here, to hear the vision, to hear the AGM? I know it sounds like something we have to do, but you know, from the last AGM to where we are now, God has done some amazing things. And we want to celebrate that, but we also want to continue that. And we've got more new exciting things to share with you and just to encourage you with. So please do be with us for that. If you haven't had a report, I think we've got a few left at the back. Um, oh, please read them. If you have any questions, if there's any clarification or something that you want, please, they need to be in to me by Wednesday. Um, so we've got time to work out the answer basically. Um, and you can ask on the day, but we will just kind of go, if we don't know, we, we're allowed to say we don't know. So if you want a question, get it in before then. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Quickest video news ever. And, um, oh, just no, I knew I was going to forget one thing. Men's group and the ladies group. At the back, there are two new posters for two new dates of the men's group and the ladies group, please go to the back, sign up, have a look, and that will have all the information that you need. Now, Vicky is going, and Joy, I believe, are going to take some of the younger ones out because you've got an important job for us. You, you are making something for the men of the church, and it's going to be wonderful, and it's going to be beautiful, and no pressure, but you've got about 20 minutes. So, <laughs> do you know how many men you're making for? Do you know how many men you're making? How many? Brilliant. Good start. Solid start. <laughs> you're going to do great. You've got 20 minutes. Lots of work. Go on. There we go. The rest of us, let's just pray. Lord, as we hear your word now, Lord, this is not a word just for fathers. This is not a word just for men, but for each and every one of us to hear you this morning, Lord Jesus. And we pray, Lord, you would encourage the fathers. You would encourage the men, but you'd encourage each and every one of us, Lord, we pray. In your precious name of Jesus. Amen. It's wonderful, it's always wonderful to have the opportunity to share on Father's Day together, to honour the fathers to one of the of the church this morning. And um, I just want to share just for a few moments a message with you. And as I've just said in the prayer, it's not just for the dads. It's not just for the men of the church. It's for each and every one of us. I said this on Mother's Day, and I'll say it again. Being a parent is difficult. Okay, just me. Brilliant. Uh, <laughs> I have found being a parent difficult, and I'm sure some of us have. It's a difficult thing to do. There's no manual, there's no guide, and we make mistakes 
along the way. I've made many, many, many mistakes. Daisies are green too quickly and too much. I once, as I've shared before, I once took Daisy to school. It was my first time of taking her to school. I took her. She was wearing two left shoes. The teacher pointed it out in front of everyone. What do you do with that when Vicky comes home and goes, how did he go taking Daisy to school? Yeah, so good I had to take her twice. Because <laughs> I had to take the right shoe back to school. It's very, very difficult. And I was thinking, you know, what can I share as an example or a story? And then I was on Facebook and a memory come up of a video. And um, I thought, this is a wonderful metaphor for how to be a parent. Because what happened was, about six, seven years ago, I got ordained. I became a reverend. Weirdly, it's harder to become a reverend than it is to become a lord. That's all I'm saying. I did less work for that. Um, but I became a reverend. Titus, you was there, wasn't you? And what happened was, you have this big sort of ceremony where um, you get ordained. And it's wonderful. And there's loads of you. And there was about 50 of us all becoming a reverend. It was a long day, wasn't it? And everybody gets an opportunity to say something. It's a bit like an Oscar speech. You get like 30 seconds. And everybody knows when the pastor says 30 seconds, that means about three and a half hours, doesn't it? So nothing was 30 seconds. And we are Whitmore, so we are pretty much last. So we've had the whole... It was a BCC, it holds about 600 people, and it was full, it was online. We had the whole sort of two and a half hours just to get nervous. Do you know what I mean? Just to sit there and get nervous. And we, we were just about to get called up, and we're standing at the side of the stage, and the person who videoed it had, was able to zoom in on us. And you see on this video... Me turn around, it was me, Daisy and Vicky, because they get to come up with me. They get to have that awkward moment where they just stand there not knowing what to do with their arms. Because they're just standing there, you know. And it's me, it's Daisy, it's Vicky, waiting for our name to be called. And you see me turn around to Daisy, and I know exactly what I said to her. I said, don't be nervous, love. It's, <laughs> it's going to be okay. Because she, she's like 12, she's nervous. I said... Just be careful, these steps are quite steep. So make sure you don't trip. Take each, you know where this is going already, don't you? <laughs> You're ahead of me. Take each step at a time, you'll be fine. You see her nodding. You hear my name get called. I turn, I'm still looking at Daisy, trip up the step. Honestly. You, you see me then walk up, you see everybody kind of laughing. Vic Daisy's reaction is the best. So we focused on Daisy. You see me trip up and she literally just goes, <laughs> and just laughs. She's laughing at me. She thinks it's hilarious. She was fine. She can do steps. But I think that is a metaphor for being a parent. Don't worry about it. I'll follow. I'll, sorry, I'll lead. You follow. I'll give you guidance. I'll give you help. Don't you worry. Everything's going to be fine. And then we trip up on the way because we've tried so hard. And that's what happened to me. It's difficult being a parent. Can I say, if you're a father amongst us, but of course a mother as well, if, if sometimes you trip up, it's okay. There's other steps you can keep stepping on. <laughs> keep going. Don't worry about it. It is difficult. Often the kids will just laugh at you and go with you anyway. <laughs> you know, it's hard. It's difficult. Never give yourself a hard time. It's hard being a parent. It's hard being a dad. And then I come to the Bible. And I could have used many examples, obviously, in the Bible of different dads, of different fathers. But I think I'm going to speak on one who had the most difficult job as a father, the most difficult job as a dad. So if you've got your Bibles, turn to Matthew 1, 18 to 25. We're going to have a Christmas service. Okay, <laughs> you know I love Christmas. And we're going to look at Joseph, the dad of the Son of God. Easy, right? 
So Matthew 1, 18 to 25 says this. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son and he gave him the name Jesus. I think Joseph never gets the credit he deserves, if I'm honest with you. When we get to Christmas, we talk about Mary, rightly so. We talk about Jesus, very rightly so. We talk about shepherds, we talk about the wise men, we talk about the innkeeper. But Joseph never really gets much of a looking, does he? So I want to do him credit today, because Joseph teaches us a lot about how to be a dad, about how to be a husband, a spiritual dad, a good person. And the reality with Joseph, we don't actually have that much to go on. He's only mentioned a few times, but when he is, he teaches us a lot. Firstly, and quite simply, he did. He did. What do I mean by that? Well, we all know the story, don't we? We know that when Joseph finds out about Mary being pregnant, he wants to divorce her. He wants to call it all off. He wants to stop it. And I'll talk about that in a moment. He, and no one can really blame Joseph for this, can we? We totally get it. And it tells us that after he had considered it, he went to bed. <laughs> Typical man. After he'd considered it, so he thought about it for a long time, he was considering it, he battled with it, he considered what was going on. It tells us he goes to bed and he dreams. Now, I find that quite impressive anyway, because I don't know about you, but for me, like one bad sentence in a sermon, one bad conversation, or a worry about what's happening the next day, I'm up all night. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not sleeping a, a wink. But this man, Joseph, he goes straight to sleep. Let's remember, he's just been considering a very incredible and difficult decision, not just about his future, but about Mary's future and the unborn baby's future. He would have gone to bed a broken man. He would have done. We don't give him that thought, really, do we? He would have gone to a broken man, yet he sleeps. And an angel says to him, firstly, don't be afraid. I, I love they always start with that. Don't be afraid. I'm being afraid if it's all the same to you, you know. <laughs> an angel is in front of me. But he says, don't be afraid. And then it says... It's okay. Take Mary as your wife. And he pretty much says, the angel pretty much says, don't worry about it. She's not had an affair. It's the Son of God. Like, that makes it easier. <laughs> oh, what a silly goose for worrying about that, eh? You know, it is the Son of God. Take Mary as your wife. But what he's really also saying is, don't just take Mary, but become the dad of Jesus. It's tough. It's a big ask. And what does it do? Verse 24. When Joseph woke up, he did. He did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him. He doesn't say he questioned. 
It doesn't say he considered it anymore. It doesn't say he asked. <laughs> it says when he woke up, he did it. In Matthew chapter 2, an angel appears to Joseph again in a dream. Proper father, sleep again. But twice he's given an instruction to go to certain places. Leaving his home, leaving his family, leaving his friends, leaving what he does. And it, what does he tell us he does? He did it. He did it. You know, Daisy often comes up to me and she has this tone where she goes, Dad. <laughs> Straight away, we all know what that means. That's either going to cost me time, energy, or money. Usually, it's all free. <laughs> Isn't it? And what do we do as fathers? We do it. <laughs> Nine times out of ten, we do it. We do what we can. We do what is the best for them. This is what Joseph does, but on such a bigger scale. He does it. He does it. Whatever the cost, whatever or however it's going to change his life, he does it. You know, I look at my dad and I think of, obviously, my dad of Father's Day. Many of you will have met him or seen him or what have you and know him. And also know that he was an alcoholic for about, oh, so, so many years, 20, 30 years. And then eventually went into a rehab centre, a Christian rehab centre. And he went on the programme. He was on the programme for a good couple of years as he was... Um, Tea, um, becoming a teetotal and, and what have you, cold turkey and, and all of those things. And that was tough. I used to find Father's Day tough because my dad was in a rehab centre, you know, and I couldn't get to see him. And then he joined Patel. He became clean and he joined them because God called him to. He knows that that is where he was meant to be. So he carries on working in this rehab centre for about 25 years. And the reality is they had to sell, me and my mum, they had to sell the house. I was living in the house at the time. And they sold the house and I had to live in the rehab centre with them. Like when I went to college and stuff like that. And, you know, I sometimes looked back at that and thought, that's really tough. I had a tough childhood. That was through my GCSEs. That's why I blame I didn't pass my GCSEs. It probably would have helped if I'd done some revision. Listen up, okay? <laughs> I can't blame that. It was on me, you know. But the reality is, I look back at that and go, that was tough. That is not a normal upbringing, is it? But the reality is, what I see in my dad, who I love very much and think the world of, and what he did was, he did it. He followed what God called him to do. Whatever the cost was, he did it. Men of the church, and God calls you to do it, and it may not be that extreme. Do it. Do it. It will show the example to your children. It will show the example to the people of the church. You know, when God called me to Mosborough, I did it. And it's the best example I could ever show Daisy. She's been called herself now to go to Bible college. So what's she doing? She's doing it. Why? Because she saw the example of me. She saw the example of her grandpa. She's seen the example of people in this church. When God calls you, do it. And that might be on, I was going to say small scale, but that's not right to say, but that might be on something of, whatever it may be, to a large scale, as long as we're like Joseph and we do it, then we're doing the right thing. Amen? Secondly, Joseph cared. He was a good person. He thought of others. And that might be quite a statement when really the first time we see Joseph, it talks about how he's going to quietly divorce Mary. And you go, well, how are you a good person? Well, Matthew 1.19 says, he did not want to expose her to public disgrace. He had in mind to divorce her quietly. 
Even though, at that moment, Joseph had every right to literally walk Mary down the street with a bell, shouting out everything that Mary had done and bring disgrace upon her, he did everything he could, which he thought was right at that point, to protect her. To protect her. Probably at the cost of him as well. He was thinking of Mary all the time and her reputation. You know, that's an example for us men. Love your wives. <laughs> love your partners. Love the people you're with. Love the people in the church you are with. Love them. Care for them. Put them first. He stays with Mary. And we must not be quick to play that down. That would have cost Joseph a lot. At Christmas, we often talk about how, how much he would have cost Mary, her reputation, how, how it would have cost Mary her friends and her family, and all of those things. But with Joseph staying with her, it would have cost him the same things. People would have laughed at him. People would have talked behind his back. People would have gossiped about him. But he cared. And he cared for Mary, and he cared about doing the right thing in front of God. So often we worry about what the world thinks, don't we? We're so worried about what the world says about us. Galatians 1.10 encourages us, though, and says, Am I now trying to win the approval of human beings or of God? Or am I trying to please people? If I was still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. I think Philippians 2, 3 to 5 sums up Joseph's example here today. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or feigned conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves. Not look at your own interests, but to each of you to the interests of the others. In your relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Lastly, Joseph loved Jesus. Do you know, he doesn't actually say that directly in the Bible. You don't get to a first where it says Joseph loved Jesus. But we see examples here. In Mark 6, 3, we see um, Je uh, Jesus being questioned. And he says, isn't this the carpenter? Matthew 13, 55 takes it a step further. Isn't this the carpenter's son? Jesus had evidently spent a long time with Joseph as he learned the trade of being a carpenter. Jesus was a carpenter. He'd learned the trade. Who knows that doesn't, that doesn't just happen overnight. That takes time. That takes time with being a person who's teaching you. That takes time of practicing, teaching and effort. Joseph will have spent many, many hours with Jesus. And isn't he the lucky one? <laughs> Spending all of that time with Jesus. We then have the last mention of Joseph. Now, thankfully, and you're going to be pleased to hear this, as a dad, I've never lost Daisy. I know, I don't want to boast, but I've never lost her. You know, you, you have those moments, don't you? You go, where is she? Oh, she's over there. The problem we've always had with Daisy, especially when she was younger, she'd never come out of her room. So we'd be at church and we'd sort of lock it up and we'd go to Daisy and she'd be like about six, seven and we'd go, we're going now and she'd go, no, I'm staying here. And we'd go, no, but we're going. We're going home. No, I'm going to stay here. I like it here. And we would, me and Vicky would look at each other and go, okay, well, we're going to go and we'll see you later. And we'd walk off and we'd head towards the door which led to the steps and we'd look back and she'd be going, Bye. <laughs> and we'd go, that's ruined our plan. <laughs> she was meant to follow us. What do we do now? And we go, well, we can't give up. So we walk out of the door, start walking down the steps. And we think she'll follow us in because we're out of the room. We look up the steps. She's at the top of the steps. She's going, have a nice time. Waving at us. You all think she's lovely and innocent. She's a right pain. And, you know, and, and she's waving. And we go, we're going, well, we can't stop here. So we keep on walking. We go to each other. That was our plan. What do we do? 
Thankfully, there's somebody always in the church who goes, go on, you're not staying here, go with your parents, go on. <laughs> and she eventually followed us. But we have this moment here where Jesus goes missing for three days. He's 12 years old and he goes missing for three days. And that's a whole message in itself. In Luke 2, 41 to 49, you can find this. He goes missing for three days. It tells us in verse 48, when they finally find him, Mary says to him, his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. Joseph was anxious that he was not with Jesus. He was anxious. You are not anxious if you don't love someone. And he was so anxious to be with Jesus. So what does this show us as a dad to Jesus who he loves? If you love Jesus, you'll spend time with him. And if you're not spending time, you'll anxiously want to. <laughs> Amen? That's a great example for each and every one of us. It's a great example as fathers for us to show our children and people in the church. That we love Jesus and we want to spend time with him. And when we're not spending time with him, we're anxiously waiting to spend time with him. Just to finish. And we're going to finish in a moment. And we're going to finish what I love doing at this church. We're going to finish with two songs. And we're going to sing the blessing. And I want to encourage us to sing the blessing over the men of this church. And then we're going to finish, as we always do, in praise. Jumping is optional. And we can go for him. We're going to praise. We're going to finish how we should. Blessing the men and praising God. But before we do that, I said on Mother's Day that over the many years since I've been here, it was mostly women in the church. There was only a few men. And the women have built this church and we, we honoured you at, Father's, uh, at Mother's Day. And I did say for the men, you have to wait for Father's Day. Well, here we are. <laughs> and I want to honour each and every one of you. I, I can't speak for Titus, but I'm sure he'll agree. It is good to have men in the church. It is good to have men in the church. It is good to have friends. It is good to have people come alongside us and us to come alongside you. We praise God for each and every one of you. I want to honour you men for your wisdom, for your practical help. I really honour you for that one. Your love, your advice that's been given. And my encouragement to you, each and every one of you men, be more like Joseph. Whatever role we play, maybe a dad or a man of a church, that we will be men who are known as men who did it. When God calls, that we didn't shy away. When God calls, we did it. That we are men that are good, caring, loving, putting others first, men. Now we will love and show that love by, of Jesus by spending time with him and anxiously always wanting to. Amen. Let's stand. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for each and every man of this church. I thank you for every woman of this church. But Lord, for every man in this church, I want to say thank you. We want to honour them. We want to say thank you for every example they've shown, for every love that they've shown, for every advice given. But Lord, we pray your blessing upon them. May your face shine upon them, Lord Jesus. May you rest upon them. May you bless them. May you bless their households. May you bless all of those men, Father God, who are fathers, but also spiritual fathers. Fathers or men showing the example. May we be men who do it. May we be men who love you. May we be men who are good people, who cares. And may you be honoured and glorified through each and every one of them, Lord, we pray. In your precious name of Jesus. Amen. 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 We're going to sing the blessing. The offering's going to come round. And hopefully, a gift's going to come round as well. So it's going to be a bit chaotic this song, but that's okay. We're praying the blessing upon them. Thank you, Daisy.
Praise him. Let's worship you, Lord. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you. Keep him, keep you. Make your face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. And the men who've been given a present today, Jeremiah 17, 7, it says it on there. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and has made the Lord his hope and his confidence. And we declare that for our lives in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Just take, just take your